Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new motherboard from Biostar. This is the Biostar Hi-Fi Z87X 3D. So based on a quick rundown of the box, the vibe I'm getting from this particular board is that Biostar has uh, put a lot of effort into the uh, audio technology in this particular motherboard. And apart from that, they're giving a solid platform for uh, a Z87, the Z87 chipset and the 1150 socket uh, indicated up here. And this one is, of course, for Intel's new fourth generation core pro processors. Please bear in mind that uh, this will not be backwards compatible with a uh, Sandy Bridge or an Ivy Bridge processor. Those are known as second and third generation. This will only work with a fourth generation Intel core processor, uh, aka Haswell. Apart from that, uh, you do get support for two-way Radeon uh, Crossfire X configurations, as well as two-way SLI configurations from NVIDIA. Uh, this one does include uh, some features of the chip, such as, such as Intel's smart response technology. Uh, and then we have a bunch of icons down here at the bottom, which might not mean a whole lot to you, but fortunately, Biostar has given us some pretty clear explanations on the back as to what each one is. So um, we'll start over here on the left side. Apart from this board being Windows 8 ready, uh, it uses 100% solid capacitors via the HDMI. You can actually do 4K output, uh, and you also get access to Biostar's Bio2 remote feature, which lets you uh, set up a smartphone to use as a remote control for your computer. I haven't tested that functionality personally myself, um, but it is a unique feature that they've integrated here. Uh, so you get the 3D Hi-Fi amp, so let's say the Smart Ear 3D. It provides true reproduction of a virtual 3D space in any headphones. Um, so that's hence the 3D moniker of the uh, title of the motherboard. Smart Ear 3D provides true reproduction of a virtual 3D space using any headphones. So Similar functionality right there. You get a Hi-Fi preamp, so this is a built-in power amplifier for your rear speaker volume. You also get the 3D sound field, uh, which is included with the Hi-Fi theater, Hi-Fi hall, Hi-Fi game spots, studio, conference, and bistro for your different applications, so different uh, listening functions integrated right there. You get the Smart Ohm or Smart Omega, depending how you want to read, read the little icon there. Uh, this is going to automatically detect your headphone impedance and select the right one. So this uh, motherboard is set up for higher impedance headphones. Then you get the MCC or multi-channel calibration uh, to automatically calibrate according to the dimensions of your room. Apart from that, uh, for the construction of the board over here on the right side, we have high V caps, which is metalized polypropylene film capacitors for each audio channel circuit uh, for low noise, low distortion, and wide bandwidth. Uh, electrostatic discharge protection of up to 15,000 volts, which is a lot of volts. You also get uh, hi-fi caps, also uh, non-polarized electrolysis, electric audio capacitors, again, uh, high, higher quality audio componentry that they've integrated. Uh, Hi-fi ground, so you get uh, noise blocking multi-layer PCB design, which isolates analog audio signals from digital sources. Hi-Fi power, uh, which is utilizing independent power design for significant reduction, uh, significant reduction in electronic noise and superb sound quality. You also get access to Virtue MVP, which can let you switch between the iGPU and uh, the uh, a discrete graphics card if you add one on, which is, of course, a possibility with this board. Smart Speed LAN, and you get Sound Blaster Cinema. That about does it for the box. Inside, we have uh, some accessories and documentation, of course. Let's see what this is. Ah, this is specifically for the Hi-Fi audio usage. This is a guideline for uh, front panel as well as rear panel connectors and what they want you to connect where. And also the, uh, a little guide for the utility there, which is a nice little add-on, also in color. Here is your main motherboard user's manual. So this is going to have a bunch of important information. So definitely keep this on hand while you're assembling your computer. Got all your parts listed right there. You also get some serial ATA cables, total of four. These all have straight plugs on both ends. They're all going to be SATA revision 1, 2, or 3 compatible. And they've got the little metal clasps to help hold them in place. Yes, all straight cables, or all straight plugs, I should say. And uh, four of those total. And uh, also a little Biostar uh, bit of Velcro right there, which is also handy for some cable management. Uh, inside here you have, I believe, yes, this is going to, oh, this is actually a microphone. So a uh, microphone which you can position out on your desk to be closer to you to pick up your voice or whatever else you might be recording. They are providing you with, I'm guessing this is a crossfire bridge, yes. Crossfire, so there's a crossfire bridge if you're gonna set up a two-way crossfire configuration. And then of course you get your input output shield there at the back, uh, which is all metal, but they are providing some little imprints there with the, uh, the identifying markers of what plugs are what. 
And now a close-up look at the Z87X 3D Hi-Fi. Uh, I wanted to point out I forgot on the accessories uh, this was tucked into the manual, but you do get a driver uh, disc, which you should not use. You should go to the Biostar website and download the latest drivers because they will be more up-to-date. Um, but here's a, here's a look at the board itself. As you can see, Biostar has gone with a black and blue color scheme. You have some blue highlights on some of the heat sinks here as well as the chipset heat sink. The board itself is a sort of semi-gloss black color. So there's a look at the back of it. Uh, and you do have some of the uh, little plastic catches right there at the back, so you can pop those off and pop off the heat sinks if you ever did want to in the future. Um, here at the front of the board, I wanted to point out to the fan headers, you get a total of five. One of them is four pin, and that's the CPU fan header, which is located right here. You get three more three pin fan headers, one at the top right here for a system fan, one in the bottom right corner down here, uh, one in the bottom middle, which is actually right about here. I know it's kind of hidden right now, but I'll give you a close-up look at it in a sec. And then one more system fan header right here underneath this blue heat sink for a rear exhaust fan. Uh, next up, let's take a close-up look at the board and the components thereupon. Uh, first off, in the lower right-hand corner over here, uh, you might notice you got a re removable BIOS chip right there, so you can swap that out if you do need to in the future. Uh, in the lower right-hand corner, you have the system fan header right there. Next to that system fan header, and I've switched over to a pen here so you guys can more easily see what I'm pointing at, uh, we have a few headers right here. Not all of them are labeled in the manual. The one in the center right there is actually your CMOS jumper, so you can use that to clear your CMOS. Uh, the J1 was not listed in the manual, so that must be for internal use. Uh, this one isn't listed either, but that says LN2, so I'm guessing that's uh, perhaps for exotic cooling functions that might be built in. Again, these aren't detailed in the manual. I'm just pointing them out since we're looking at them, but uh, there they are. The clear CMOS is probably going to be the one that you find most effective and useful. Uh, right up here, we have a uh, surface-mounted debug LED, which is very handy, especially if you're having any difficulties getting your system up and running. You can reference the post codes that are listed right here. They're all labeled in the manual, and you can get a much better idea of uh, what the problem might be with your motherboard. you got a surface-mounted power and reset switch, which is always handy, especially if you're doing an outside-the-box build. Right here, your front panel connectors, kind of color-coded there, as well as a little chart uh, printed onto the PCB so you can tell which one is which uh, for connecting your front panel power and reset button and uh, whatnot. Uh, a couple USB 2.0 connectors here and here, so uh, those are going to give you a couple USB 2.0 ports each. Here's that system fan header that uh, you didn't really get a good look at at the beginning, but uh, there it is. You get a COM header right there, uh, infrared header for infrared devices, SPDIF out. Uh, and then over here on the left side of the board, you'll notice your Puro Hi-Fi, so this is a bit of an electrostatic uh, electrostatic discharge protection uh, for your audio chip, which is the ALC 898 from Realtek, provides 7.1 channel audio. Above that, you can see some of the uh, high quality audio capacitors that uh, Biostar has integrated onto this board for a uh, enhanced sound experience. Uh, you also have the uh, other three pin uh, fan header that I pointed out right there. And then you also have a front panel audio connector, which is tucked away right in here behind the uh, analog audio connectors uh, for the I.O. Uh, let's talk next about PCI Express. All your PCI Express slots are located right here. Uh, you're going to have a couple that run at PCI Express Gen 3. That would be the top slot here and this slot right here. Uh, these are both full, oops, sorry, full length uh, X16 PCI Express slots. Uh, if you just have a single card installed at the top, it'll run at X16. If you have two cards installed here and here, it'll run at X8 and X8. Um, now, from my understanding, this board should be compatible with both two-way Crossfire X as well as two-way uh, NVIDIA SLI solutions. However, all of the documentation I've read has indicated that uh, Crossfire X is supported. I haven't seen anything specifically listed on SLI, so uh, the jury is still out on that one. Uh, I did want to point out that physically the board should support it, um, but uh, your mileage may vary. You might want to double check with Biostar first if you were planning on doing a two-card NVIDIA configuration on this particular board. But Crossfire X, I can verify, that is uh, definitely supported uh, from Biostar for two-way configurations. I also have some PCI Express Gen 2 slots, so some X1 slots here, here, and here, three of those total. Uh, another PCI Express Gen 2 slot down here at the bottom. This one's uh, coming off of the chipset. This is a PCI Express Gen 2 X4. Speaking of the chipset, all well, that's located right there. You see the Puro Hi-Fi labeling on that one. Um, so the, uh, the headphones, of course, since this is uh, a board that's geared towards uh, higher sound quality. Um, the Z87 chipset is located right underneath that. And uh, one of the really cool features of Z87 is that you get a full complement of six 
SATA revision 3, 6 gigabits per second ports for your SSDs and hard drives and any other uh, drives you might connect. So if you have a high-end SSD, don't worry, um, you can plug it in right there. It will run at full speed. Uh, and then you also have a 90-degree uh, right-angled USB 3.0 header right there. Uh, and then uh, that's another cool feature of Z87 this time around is you do get USB Gen 3 support. So that's going to be a native USB 3.0 uh, connection point right there. And that'll give you uh, one or two uh, front panel USB 3.0 ports. Or rear panel if you if you plug in a rear panel to that, of course that's that's also your option. Uh, moving up the side of the board, you have a 24-pin main motherboard power connector right there, 24-pin. Uh, up above that, you have well at the very top you have a system fan header that's right there, uh, and then next to that you have all of your DDR3 slots. So that's all, all four of your slots right there. Uh, this is a dual channel configuration, so uh, make sure, of course, that you purchase at least two sticks of identical DDR3 memory. Uh, you're going to you're going to want uh, I would say anything up to 1600 speed is which is officially supported by Intel you can actually start from 1066 1333 or 1600 and then you can do overclocking speeds as well um, which might be supported by your memory bear in mind overclocking will uh, will depend heavily on the quality of the IMC in your Intel fourth generation Haswell processor um, fourth generation core as well processor, I guess I should say. Um, but you do get DDR3 overclock speeds up to 2667. And you can do up to 8 gigs uh, per, per stick. So that means you can do up to 32 gigs of memory installed in here total. Um, you know what, while I'm pointing at this, I'm going to talk about something completely different. That's the SATA down there, because I did want to point out that for SATA, um, it also has RAID support. RAID 0, RAID, RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 10. Um, which is pretty cool. That's from the Z87 chipset. Okay, back on topic. Right here is your uh, 1150 socket for your Intel fourth generation core processor. Uh, again, not backwards compatible with socket 1155, so don't try to drop in a Sandy Bridge or an Ivy Bridge processor into that. You also get a 12 phase CPU power delivery, um, so you can see some of the power delivery components right here. The uh, chokes, for example, are sticking out rather prominently. You also got some capacitors. MOSFETs are down here. Underneath the actual heat sinks, those are generally the hottest of the power delivery components, but uh, some heat sinks on there to keep those nice and cool. And then on the upper left here, supplemental CPU power connector, that's your 8 pin, so definitely plug that in from your power supply to make sure your CPU has all the juice it needs and uh, you should be off and running. Let's finish off with your I.O. here at the back. So first off, you got a combo PS2 port right there. Uh, that is purple, so that's for a keyboard, although occasionally the purple ports will still work with mice as well. Uh, you got two, four, four. You have four USB 2.0 ports right there. Uh, you have your uh, video outputs here, and that is for the iGPU in your processor. So uh, bear in mind, you can set this board up without a discrete graphics card. Um, but you will get, uh, of course, your DVI, uh, VGA, as well as HDMI out right there. And uh, another feature that you get from the up upgrade from uh, Ivy Bridge to Haswell is you can actually support uh, triple display uh, using the iGPU in your, in your processor, which is a pretty cool feature as well. A couple more USB 3.0 ports. Again, those are natively supported by the Z87 chipset. Uh, you got LAN here provided by, by a Realtek uh, RTL8111F NIC. And then finally, of course, your analog audio. Uh, microphone input, as well as all of your outputs there for your 7.1 channel audio supported by the Realtek ALC898 chip. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been our unboxing and overview of the new Biostar Hi-Fi Z87X 3D motherboard featuring the Z87 chipset and the 1150 socket for Intel's new fourth generation core processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, you should hit the like button right down there in the corner. Uh, also, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos just like this one, and we'll see you all next time.